Welcome, 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 Beauty and the Bee Radio. <laughs> I got Miss Shona. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, what's your last name? Because sometimes on email, so do I? Have it's to uh, my my full name is Shoshona Elavia Monge. Monge oh. is in Spanish, Munji in English. So, oh. but Shona for short, because a lot of people have difficulties even just saying Shona. Do but, I hablas español? Mm, poquito. Very little. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, you going to flip it and say it all authentic <laughs> up in here. Like, I'm like, what's going on? Okay, so you are the PR extraordinaire. Why, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. But we have some things that we're going to get into today uh, that we're going to talk about. Some other things. Some <laughs> other things that I'm not, you know, we were just having a conversation. And you was like, I got to tell you something. I was like, okay. <laughs> then I was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. So I don't gonna, think the world is really ready for all, all of it yet. Though. They're not ready. Yeah. They got to get ready. So what did you do? <clears throat> this was Grammy week this week. What did you do for, Ugh. I know you were out and about, you had clients. What were you doing for? Uh, we were, we were everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh we did uh, Essence, we did um, Lamaya's uh, launch perfume. for her perfume line, which smells really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Where else were we? Oh, OK, oh. Magazine Party. OK. Uh, <laughs> it was something we did every a little night. Bit, a little bit of everything. I'm still trying to recuperate from all of it. Are you excited for Kendrick Lamar? I am. I am very excited for Everybody, him. Everybody, all the winners. I shouldn't have said that. Like, well, yeah. A little bit. Most of them. Most of them. <laughs> like, you're excited. For, well, you mo not all of them? I mean, I'm happy everybody is a winner, but, you know, Kendrick Kendrick put in the work. He deserved it, and uh, I think his statement was great. Mm -hmm. You know, so. A lot of, of course, it came with a lot of controversy, but that's that what, was the whole him? purpose yeah with the, the statement you know the shackles the chains the africa and oh the you, performance yeah, the okay performance. i thought you meant the speech no 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 yeah yeah but you know he has a no, great no. he has a great team behind him mm -hmm. they know they but know what they're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's good yeah and then um we have something that we're gonna show that he just got the keys to the city yeah this weekend at Compton. did you cover that yes good 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 so good. we're gonna show that really really quickly just to, um, you have that? You don't want to pay it right now? <laughs> too soon, too soon. I'm, I'm being, I'm being told what to do up in here. It's still Black History Month. Happy Black History Month still going on. I got Cherise Ford in here. We're doing Follow Friday this month. I want to say hello to you. She's going to come in and talk. Do you know about Follow Friday? I don't. You're going to have to come because I invited you the last time. You did. Through Matthew? Remember? Oh, Yeah. So yeah. you was you was in the hood. So you were in the area, but you yeah. didn't, you know. It's so okay. So yeah, I, oh, I'll definitely make the make the next one. You'll make sure. the next yes, one. Yes, for sure. What? <laughs> well, I would like to see you know before I talk about anything else, Grammy or get into anything else. I was just gonna you know flip it to a little Kendrick Lamar and Compton getting the keys to his city before he gets his five Grammy nomination. It yeah. was actually eleven. I mean, five <laughs> awards out of his 11 nominations. <laughs> yes. You know what? Let me just keep it real. <laughs> Every single day I've been doing something. I went to Vegas yesterday, and then we drove. So I got back this morning. So I'm a little like, you know, but I'm, uh, I'm with it. I got it was it. a long week. It was so, a long week. Yeah. Every single day. So don't be, you know. I got this, right? <laughs> it's a joke in there somewhere, right? <laughs> right, right, right? Yeah. Comedian. Jeez. It's a joke in there somewhere, right? You looking real cute today. Oh, Where are you going? You. I always like your titties. <gasps> I don't know if they heard that. I don't know if the, the listeners heard that. The mic that. is on. <laughs> <laughs> I told you who I was. Really bad. That is awesome. It look, they feel good in the shirt? That's when y'all met. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, yes, before we get, you know what, we have all this playing and stuff. We're just trying to get acclimated and stuff. We got rain going on. I can keep talking. See how you do? <laughs> I'm just wanting to, I'm so happy for Kendrick Lamar because a lot of times, you know, you know how you do the first album and you get a little excitement and then you have the haters and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, you know, you start getting accolades for your work and you feel like, you know, it's accomplished. So I'm proud of Kendrick Lamar getting the keys to the city. Yeah. We were out there this Saturday in Compton with Mayor Asia Brown. And I'm going to show you a little bit about it right She's now. a young mayor, too. She is. She's like 30-something.
and the Bee. We just wanted to thank you for doing this today and um, see how you felt about honoring Kendrick Lamar today. Um, just, just a great honor. Um, it's always great to just take the time to honor um, those that have come from Compton, that represent Compton, that are great ambassadors. And I think that Kendrick specifically is just a generational icon. He's a voice for our generation and just really translates the issues that are going on socially to a, a broad base and a younger generation, which is so important. So I just commend him on his um, ingenuity and just really for always caring about and investing in the city of Compton. How Kendrick Lamar has influenced the generation. In the days of rich homie Quan, Young Thug, and Boo Boo the Fool, where rap lyrics no longer told a story like it was our very own country western genre, just when rap started to begin to sound like a bunch of repetitive cliches, and sometimes like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, that even I, who was born in the rap capital of the world, cannot understand. One of the main jobs of a teacher is to promote hope and encouragement to those who come from an environment where dreams are sometimes stripped away from our youth. In the 2000s, I humbly introduced poetry to Kendra's class at Vanguard Learning Center because there was tension on the streets between Hispanics and African Americans at that time. And I also introduced poetry because a lot of our children who live in Compton come from some, circ some circumstances that are often hard to deal with and it leads to anger at home. Compton, what up? Man, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, Y'all got to give me a second. This is, uh... I just got to sit for a second, just watch y'all right now. The band, these girls, they killed it. Being in this moment just takes me back 20 something years ago. My mom in here, my pops and my mom's right here right now. We used to constantly walk to this, uh, I don't know, y'all probably don't know, some kids out here. It was Circuit City before. Yeah, anybody know Circuit City? We used to walk to this, uh, Circuit City and this Boys Market. That's, that's way back, the Boys Market. We walking around these places and my mama said, you know where you from? You know, this, this is your neighborhood right here. This, this is Compton, California. And that's when I grasped the concept, her putting in me that it's not just a city. Her telling me this as a kid, telling me this not meant strength. You know what I'm saying? Where we from? It means strength, period, point blank. Three, two, one, and we're back. Beauty and the Beat Radio with Miss Shona up in here. Um, we're going to get into everything. So that was uh, Kendrick Lamar getting the keys to the city before he got his five Grammy wins for his 11 nominations. So he got that straight because I know I probably messed it up earlier. Really. That's okay. That's okay? He's not going to fault you for it. He's not going to fault me for it. <laughs> and then we, um, uh, her clients as well, Dr. Professor Kills, they had some... Hells, I'm sorry. The Divas of Compton performed and they were really, oh, really awesome. good. They were really, really good. And they got a meet and greet with him afterwards. And he was like, Y'all killed it. I, uh, you know, he. Those are the girls in blue? The purple. Purple. Oh, purple. purple. Mm hmm. Okay. He up I guess so. <laughs> uh huh, uh huh. So, what are your thoughts on, like, what's coming up this weekend? Is it the big Oscars? Uh, no, I was at the end of the month. Yeah. Oh, the end of the yeah. month. Oh, okay, so we don't even have to talk about that. Yeah. But what are your thoughts about like all these conversations about diversity? Because like when I look at the Grammys and just it feels diverse. So with it just being the Oscars, what do you feel about that? Being a, someone that works with talented well, people all the time. I think as fans are onlookers who mm -hmm. don't work in the business mm -hmm. they they see it differently than maybe we would see it or the actors that are in that community mm -hmm. um you know for the oscars i didn't see all the movies so i can't really give my opinion on if they were good if they were bad or mm -hmm. not uh but there is not enough diversity in in the Oscar administration department. I think that's really that's, where it's at. That's where it lies. Because right. you can't have 67-year-olds voting on an NWA movie. Mm -hmm. They're not going to relate. They're not going to get it. They're not. It's just like, oh, it's a bunch of 
again acting like fools and mm -hmm. that's how they're gonna see it so and and the people who were nominated in the movie uh for that movie were two white uh writers and the movie comes from dre and q and f gary gray who were the original writers and they weren't nominated at all so that's an issue in yeah. itself so there definitely needs to be some change when it comes to who is actually voting for these movies. I think she mentioned, what's Cheryl Boone Isaacs? Is that the president of? She mentioned that they're going to change the vote. Well, process. they need to. You know, SAG Awards was pro-black this year. Integrated. <laughs> it was a good SAG Awards this year. I think Idris made a comment <laughs> so. about that. But you know what? I think they tried. Um, they put, like, I think Kevin Hart, The Weeknd's performing. It's so many... Chris Rock is, I think it's going to be all right. Well, I mean, now they have to switch it up. Mm -hmm. Even having Chris as a host doesn't say a lot. You know, he's going to, I mean, he's going to go and represent and do what he, he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. He's getting paid a lot of money to do it. So, I mean, I wouldn't turn the job down. I and those either. who speak, have spoke of things, um, you know, are, are very high paid actors also in the business. There's mm -hmm. a lot of white actors who been nominated for a lot of films or haven't been nominated who are amazing actors as well so we just have to look at what what is it that we really are trying to say here. I think that's a good point because that's how I feel it's just like like you said everybody doesn't say well Miley Cyrus and Nicki Minaj got into that little thing mm -hmm. it's like Nicki you didn't win this time right but other people don't win every time right. either. you can't win everything so, so yeah so. okay I think we just gonna have to watch it and see how it play out <laughs> you look like you over there biting your tongue like woo 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 <laughs> It's about Shona today, but, but well, you got a comment. You know how you could tell somebody how it is. No, I was saying Chris Rock is a token black dude. Like, mm. It's a go-to. That's a whole nother. That's a whole that's nother a day. Well, but it is. It, you, 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 you. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. So how have you been? I've been good. You've been tired. Good? Tired? But a good tired. Because good that tired? means we, the MV7 group, is doing what we're supposed to be doing. I ran standing. into your business partner. Which, oh, uh, Barbara. Barbara. Shout out to Barbara. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> it was nice to meet you for the first time. Yes, I was like, oh. she, she's uh, my, my hidden Latin, Latin uh, firebomb. So, you know, we're making it work. Mm -hmm. We're steadily adding new clients and uh, getting referrals and planning events. So this year is going to be very, it started off like a huge snowball, like really fast. And mm -hmm almost overwhelming at the same time but you know we are very grateful and blessed so we're excited i know it's on, it's almost the end of february already y'all yeah. remember when we said like merry christmas you remember do you do you still say happy new year now like when do you stop saying happy new year yeah. well if i haven't <laughs> seen someone for in this year yet i'll say happy new year even like in june oh no 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 <laughs> i mean like i mean but I, I if i haven't seen someone in about 2 months and it's right now like happy new year yeah. but i think that's about over too that's about yeah over i don't too. know when you really stop saying happy new year like for I, i'll give it the first three months and, and then after, it's that, a wrap. It's a, after that it's, it's done so it's yeah a wrap. yeah so we know you know how to manage clients and events and people mm -hmm. but we had a little conversation and i think you know how to manage your love life <laughs> a, you know kind of special i want to get into bit. we call it polyamorous is that what it is yes i am a practicing polyamorous okay so not I a polygamist people keep getting it wrong there's a huge difference <laughs> polygamous is when you're married yeah to multiple okay. people okay gotcha yeah okay gotcha that's against the law when it's a polygamist not in africa though right or islam or islam <laughs> okay. no because i do know that yeah <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about polyamory. Explain um, it, describe it. Well, polyamory is basically the art of loving multiple people. Mm -hmm. So you can be in committed relationships mm -hmm. with multiple people. And people think that that's impossible. I've had debates and arguments about this. Um, but it's a natural feeling to be attracted to more than one person. 
and it is very even possible. Even when you're in love with someone else, you feel like it's like not to feel okay attraction. Like look at him, be like he cute. I mean, everybody looks at somebody all the time, even okay. when you're monogamous. Monog, you know, don't act people, on it. Okay. They just, they just it? don't act on it. Okay, it's cool. human nature. Right, right. But it is very possible to be in love with two people at the same time. Okay, so how did you know that in your heart you're like, okay, I'm in love. You have children, mm -hmm. so have you been married before? Never. You've never been married, but you have. I've been engaged six times, and I've called off every engagement except for one. <laughs> that sounds like Cynthia Bailey. One time I was, like, I was like, Queen. How yeah, my friends happen? called me the runaway fiance. Yeah, you are. Why? I just knew that those marriages weren't going to make me happy. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to be happy in the long run. So. so what I'm hearing is that you definitely know what you want. So that, because yeah. of that, you're able to make this decision easily and say, what is this that I'm feeling and how do I deal with it honestly so no one's feelings are hurt? Well, I've always been honest, mm -hmm. even since I was a kid. When I started dating, I've always said, look, I like him and I like him and that's just what it is. So you've never been in a committed relationship? I have. I mean, some some you get tired. You don't want to be dating two people at one time. So I have been monogamous several mm -hmm. times. And, mm -hmm. you know, my friends say I have like the two-year itch. After two years, I get bored. And I'm like, okay, this is, I'm done. On to the next. <laughs> so this time I said, let me try something different. Okay. Let me just be honest. I, at the time I was in a relationship with... Uh, Robert, who is my primary, because we live together, and we oh, so one has they they do have a hierarchy. That's how um, just because we live together, but okay. they they are both treated the same, even though sometimes they don't see it that way. Um, in my book, they are. <laughs> so how did that conversation start? Because you said you're you're honest from day one, mm -hmm. so you're living with Robert. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y'all in this relationship at that moment, it's monogamous. Yeah. How do you, honey? I gotta tell you something. How do you start that conversation? Um. Well, I basically it was kind of like that. It, <laughs> I just said, you know, I need to talk to you about some feelings that I have, and normally when I get this feeling, mm -hmm. I end things. Mm -hmm. I end my relationship. So now we have this blended family. And these children need to know stability because they were coming from a very unstable environment. His kids with from his marriage. Okay. So I'm like, we and have you guys this before the, his marriage, you guys kind of dated before and knew each other before. No, we've known each other since the fourth grade. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and I've known Eric since the ninth grade. That's the other boyfriend. Okay. So um, I just basically told him I want to explore us having an open relationship and that doesn't necessarily mean that every time he goes out he's like looking or I'm looking and mm -hmm. I, I never date anybody new it's I was just about to say that, that it own. sounds like you got it pretty locked down like it's either you or you <laughs> it's not like we're out there saying I want to date five people but I'm in two healthy relationships yeah. at the same time yeah okay yeah and he he was a little apprehensive about it at mm -hmm. first because it was just like, uh, whoa. But they were both what I call, uh, they get a little upset when I say it, but they were both serial cheaters in their marriage. They were both married before. Okay. For f over 15 years, they got married real young. So, you know, being that young and having kids and they were still finding their way mm -hmm. as men. Um, and I can say to this day that they are both absolutely great guys, great dads and great partners do you think all men cheat um no I don't because I have a lot of male friends who are very faithful okay. in their relationship but okay. I do think all men think about it okay and I think more women think about it than men so that's why we're having this conversation today mm -hmm. because if you're having this thought yourself and you're like what is it and you can't define it this is what it is this, it, I mean in a sense mm -hmm. there's there polyamory the whole community it goes way deeper than just us there are some people who are on levels that I, even me I'm not even ready for what's the difference between polyamory and say a swinger that goes to a club and looks for different people each time then so what would be the difference between that and that um, because you're getting permission. Swing, yeah, because swingers are spontaneous mm -hmm. and there's no commitment there. Okay. So there's commitment. Like we share bills, we share responsibilities, even in both households. Okay. So you know, there's um, it's like almost having two families. My my friends call me. Uh, I have uh, 
brother husbands. <laughs> like some girls have like gay husbands or something like that. Like sister wives, the men yes. have, the, right. I have brother husbands. <laughs> so how does that work? Like how do how do your kids deal with that? Because you you like you saying you're blending no. families and they're not gay. Let me because I I get uh, that question a lot. They you're, don't even in, intertwine. Somebody says something about gay somewhere. Um, you, nowhere with your kids? No 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 oh. with the men. The, oh. I don't I don't date gay men. I don't date bisexual men. Uh, they're both men mm -hmm. who live in separate homes. Mm -hmm. They do not interact with each other. They don't even speak to each other. Now some relationships they all live in the house. Mm -hmm. They go on dates. They go on dates with their metamors and like it's a whole thing. We're not. We live totally two, three separate lives from each other. So when I'm with three at home, lives. yeah, because I have that my life with them and I have my own life. Like I, I need me time. So okay, <laughs> usually your significant other is your like best friend as well so mm -hmm. there's definitely you've known one since ninth grade one since fourth grade when you guys are talking do you have conversations about the other guy Is yeah it like all the time oh my yeah i definitely have to uh it's the the lines of communication i mean people don't have this open and honesty in their mono relationships right so it's about if I'm feeling a certain way that was something that happened at home, I definitely can express it to to Eric and vice versa with with Robert. So do does that play a role in your sexuality? Do you feel like okay, both of these are straight men? Do you how does that make you feel as a woman? Are you straight all the time? Do you ever feel like you want to date a other woman? people outside your relation outside of the two relationships you're having? Or is it strictly that? I just had that conversation with one of them the other day. Mm. Um, no, I just, I really don't have the time. <laughs> Let's just say that. I mean, because you're balancing family, work. Yeah, I'm a full-time mom. I work for myself. Mm. Uh, you know, there's seven kids in my home. Me and Robert shared seven right. children together. So. so seven kids are getting ready for school every morning. Well, in your two household. two don't live in the house. Okay, but there's so seven five kids, kids are yeah. getting ready for school, work, playtime, and all that every day. Going yeah, on. I have soccer. I have a very very strong foundation of support because okay. I've worked for myself for so long. My my dad, my aunts, my friends. I have a great great support system. So I'm very lucky in that sense because there's so many of us. <laughs> So, do you have friends in this same community? No, that are just me. You're kidding. No. You don't know anyone else. I know them now because I've joined their groups, groups and, and uh -huh. but I, they're none of my immediate friends. No, they all live vicariously through me. The the shoulda woulda couldas. I wish I had that in me, but just won't do it. You know, most of my girlfriends want the the picket fence and the horse and the. I don't want all that. So, it sounds like you're having fun, or not fun, I'm not going to make it fun. Yeah. You're in a relationship with, can they date other people? Yes, they can. And you don't have a problem with that? I do not. I encourage, I, I encourage one of them, but they just won't do it. No. I mean, work, work and family comes first. So, where does jealousy, like, honestly, we're, I'm, we're women. Mm -hmm. We have emotions. Y'all do? How do you do? Yeah, uh, oh, oh, so now I'm di we're different. Okay. Oh. I love you. I love you. But if I had two of my friends here, they would just say, I am I am not the norm. I do not. Um, I get jealous, but not over things that. I'll get jealous because Robert went and bought a motorcycle and I want an Audi. So oh. I'm like, why didn't I get the Audi first before the motorcycle? I get jealous over things like that. But when it comes to other women, I'm I'm very secure within me and my friendship with them. Mm -hmm. That and my and my answer to that always is, if they end up dating someone mm -hmm. that they truly fall in love with and know that this life isn't for them anymore, as their friend first, I'm gonna bless them and wish them well. So what if, I get that, I get that, the <laughs> communication is open and honest, mm -hmm. but you're not, the support system is there from your family. What, how did your parents react to this? Do you well, my, my mom is deceased, okay. and my dad is, uh, my, da my dad lives in the house, too. So, you know, my dad is just like, hey, whatever's going to bring peace, he's, a, you know, feisty he's a spunky Puerto Rican man and he's just like and he like he gets along and knows both of them well he knows yeah he he knows both of them but of course his relationship is with Robert because we all live under one roof 
So, so he doesn't see Eric. Nobody really sees Eric but at you. all. But me. And my friends, if we go out and with the family, he doesn't come around the family. So you wouldn't be jealous, say, if Eric went and um, helped another female get a car or something? Because he mm. who got the truck? So no, I want the I want the Audi. You want the Audi. <laughs> Rob got the motorcycle. Okay, so. so he went and got a motorcycle. <laughs> so what if he went and did something? There's no jealousy. You don't get jealous ever? No. I don't. I don't have time to. I just really bought my work. My mm -hmm. m these are my babies, my babies, my actual babies, my company, and then they fall in line after that. This is the legacy that I'm building for them so they don't have to work as hard. Is uh you know so to the so neither of these men are your children's father correct no okay so do they interact with both of them no they don't they do not no so not only yet. the one in your house yes David yeah okay no not David Robert Robert I don't even know who David is y'all I don't know. <laughs> don't get her in trouble <laughs> somebody so are you sexually active with both of them yes okay. Yes, very well protected. So then team. they're not jealous either. So you, is I think you had to train them into that because I don't know. As a, you know, men they get jealous too. Maybe not. You know, was there some jealousy on their part when this first came about and they knew each of them were not your only person? Well, for Eric coming in, he mm -hmm. already knew what the situation was because me and you and our, okay. me and Robert have been together for five and a half years now, so he knew what it was. Mm -hmm. And for Rob to come around to it. I think at the time it wasn't as I had a I have a friend that lives out of state mm -hmm. and that was kind of like he was the other boyfriend at the time but I would only see him once a year maybe once or twice a year because of work and stuff but when Eric came into play it was more like in your face because mm -hmm. he's here now I'm spending more time with him so that balance had to we had come to sit about. and talk and and say, hey, well, how many days is he going to get? And, and we don't do it like that. It's just like a wing thing. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, if I'm not working, if I don't have events, mm -hmm. I may go hang out with him tonight. I may come home. But I never, ever, ever am not home for my kids, not in the morning. Do you plan on having more kids? Oh, I, no. 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 Shop mm -hmm. closed? Mm-hmm. It is permanently shut down. What if you did get pregnant? I can't. I'm going to sue the hospital. Uh <laughs> I cannot have any more kids, so, you know, the four I have are a blessing, um, and then I gained three additional kids, so, you know, and one and one more. Um. So it's like an extended family, you guys all. What? How is Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, how, do that, how is that dealt with, and how do you spend your time? Well, this was the first year where I was with both of them, so not together in the same house. Okay. Like, he, Eric, went with his family in... I was with mine so I had the kids uh, I think Robert was with his mother mm -hmm. and I, I had all the kids with me so I'm not big on holidays so you it's know. not really a big deal to me I celebrate my dad puts a, a tree in the house I would not have a tree in my house I'd rather spend all that money on trips taking them to see the world and you know and those are things that I've implemented like buying timeshares and getting property so we can do those things with our kids. So I'm little, yeah. Okay. So who's going to go on the trip? Well, I guess, what, do you just split the, how do you split your time on the trip? <laughs> so I have to ask these it's questions. A lot of, I know, it's, it's very confusing to people. Um, right now, the way things are, because I do have small children, the prominent household is me, Robert, and our, and our kids. Okay. So when I do things with it's Eric, Robert. it's just me and Eric. Okay. It's no, no kids are involved in the in my other life at all. Yet. Does Robert get mad sometimes? Oh yeah, they him? both do. Okay, so you is they it? both do. <laughs> they both get emotional and uh, you know, they're spoiled. I'll just say that. Okay. That they, they are very spoiled, both of them. And how long has this, how did you define polyamory for yourself? Once you knew that, well, we said that already. Once you knew that you didn't want to be with one person, you said that. So how long have you been practicing? Uh, openly, I guess three years now. Okay. And then I gave Robert a book called The Ethical Slut. Mm -hmm. And that kind of helped him kind of deal with His transitioning emotion. into this kind of lifestyle. So... You know, it's a choice. They can walk away at any given moment. They don't have to deal with it. But 
I this is the deal. Will. You're being honest. <laughs> so how do so other women out there are like that's me. That's me. I could do that. I, you know. What would you say? What would be your advice to have that open conversation? The the women that I've met that are in this life mm -hmm. are way older women. Okay. And the women that have a lot of questions and think they can do it mm -hmm. are younger, early 30s. Um, Don't want to share. It's right. like, that's all me. And you, if you touch it, right. we're going to have a problem. So what I get a lot of is... Um, what I get a lot of is that uh, I'm so jealous I can't do it. But mm -hmm. what you need to do is find out why you are so jealous. Where are your insecurities coming from? Because that's where jealousy lies, usually with insecurities. It's something about you that you're not sure of that you think he's going to find outside of your relationship. Mm. So you need to figure what that is. So are you going to do some panels or something about this? Because <laughs> I think you're going to have to define this for others. I think uh, people that, are going to have to I keep, understand it. I keep it. hearing I need to. But, you know, it's like I'm not here to put my lifestyle on everybody. I don't feel that yeah, way. Yeah. I just think that you're defining and explaining it and understanding that this is for you. Yeah. And, you're, you're and it could help somebody. You mm -hmm. know, it could, it could help somebody who's torn between two men or yeah. two women and he wants to be honest and doesn't know how. But, you know, I've always said honesty is always the best because if you lie, then you're making the decision for them. And that's just not, it's not fair to anybody's life to choose their destiny for them. Mm -hmm. So be honest and deal with the outcome, however it may be. So do you think that you'll ever, okay, so you're dealing with it. This is what your life is right now. You guys are cool. You're creating two, um, two separate families. Or not two separate families, mm -hmm. a commingled family. So, well, we don't commingle. They, they will never commingle with each other. Never. Ever. Okay. Mm -mm. So you picked up three additional kids from the relationship that you're in in the household. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Will you ever be in a committed relationship again? You think? No. <gasps> never. <laughs> nah. I gotta be old and not walking, and just can't do nothing else. And then at that point, they will probably both take care of me. You bossy with your man. I'm not bossy. I'm very, I'm like. <laughs> Any comments? You got your team in here. Comment, 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 My peanut gallery. Um, <laughs> I am not bossy. I'm, I guess because I am a boss. Not a boss like I'm a boss bitch. You a boss? But I'm a boss in that sense to where I like everything to be controlled. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm controlling. Mm -hmm. I like structure. So there has to be structure in my home with my kids, with their chores, with my men, how we pay the bills. Everything needs to be structured and if that structure is out of line then I feel all discombobulated. So even with Eric, like from him transitioning from his marriage and how that marriage was and how they communicated to how I communicate it's a learning curve for him as well because he's so not used to doing certain things or being open about certain things that I'm like, hey, you didn't discuss this or we didn't talk. He was just like, I'm still trying to get it. You so know? are there self-help groups? So you're saying that you've reached out and you've met other people that mm -hmm. weren't like people that you know before. So I'm in this awesome group on Facebook called um, Black and Poly. Okay. And there's even people from other races in it who are just learning, who want to learn um, the lifestyle. And uh, why y'all laughing? Not, I mean, he I went find to it. Fa he uh, went to grab uh, his uh, phone. Uh, <laughs> you know, you did, and not poly, uh, technic or whatever. It's a college called poly. No, yeah, no. Cal poly. It's um, it's a it's an awesome group. The the people who created it are are teachers within themselves. So it's people who have a lot of questions and who are still learning whatever they're, if they're in triads or if they're in V relation, it's, it's a whole world. So like, you, you, you've said a few words that <laughs> I didn't want to like, you know, get all technical, mm -hmm. but so every word has a definition. Yeah. That I am in a monopoly relationship right now, meaning that I am monogamous to my two loves, which is for some people would think it's like not possible, but it is because I'm, only with them too mm -hmm. and nobody else would it be okay to bring someone else into that relationship at the if they chose to i mean it's somebody that we would have to all agree upon yeah. at this point where you're at everybody needs an approval yeah you know and sometimes i really wish y'all would have somebody else because then it'll kind of take away the pressure 
<laughs> off of me because I got a lot of work to do. Work. Uh, handling two men. <laughs> uh, so you, got you know, a lot of energy. If, if there are any women out there that are interested in these two awesome men, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm uh-uh. kidding, but no, it's uh, they they've gone on dates. They the dates didn't pan out well. And so you just stay t- <laughs> Y'all can't hear the peanut gallery over here. It's awesome. He's like, yeah, bitch, you're cool, but you ain't me, though, because I got both of them running well, out. No, and me. I don't, and it's it's more of a friendship than anything, mm-hmm. and that's what I value the most about both of them. You know, and people, please don't think that my relationship at home is perfect. Me and, me and Robert argue all the time. We have regular relationship problems as far as finance and disciplining kids and household yeah Uh so you know we deal with things from that perspective but when it comes to dating and going out and you know it's been times he'll say he has a date and i'm like what you wearing let me like let me help you pick out what you're gonna wear this is so new to me i'm gonna have to learn more i'm gonna have to go to that facebook group to read up on i'm not gonna join but i'm gonna read well it is a private group so Mm -hmm. you definitely have to be invited uh, invited in so so how do we address do you have a a um, how do we address you in this? Cause I'm you, just showing it. You just showing it. It's just showing it. Okay. And just there's no title. It's not like you, we walk around and say I'm polyamorous. Hi, I'm Shona. I'm polyamorous. I know. No, like it's not like. I, no, I'm just Shona. You okay, know, when people Shona. ask if I have a boyfriend. I say, yeah, I have two. Oh. Yeah, I just. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I I can't claim one without the other one. So. Okay, so well, how can they find you? Somebody might want to hit you up and say, you know, have a polyamorous Well, question. on Twitter and uh, Instagram, when it comes to that, that mm-hmm. it's uh, polylove underscore 77. Mm. So, and then for PR, <laughs> it's uh, the MV7 group on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Okay, I have the lovely Sharice Ford in here. I wanted her to talk about, because you got to come this Friday as well. Okay, I need to move. No. Oh. You can just come. Yes, just, just we want you in camera. It's Follow Friday. It's, okay. Just you like no? No. So what do you do on Follow Friday? I, oh, I'm gonna let that. her explain okay. it. Oh, okay. Because I want you to come to bring your clients. You like? Oh, the event. It's I had a, another event that night. Oh, okay. It was Sunday's. You know the. Dang. And this thank is the last. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Sharice, oh. Shona, Shona, oh, Shona, we met again. <laughs> the PR professionals up in the house, so we could have a little PR conversation too. Is that's okay with you? Yeah, because I can't really get in on that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that free. It is. I, I understand. I just feel no, like no, no, say, no. So. It's it's not even. Uh, that's me. That's how yeah. I feel about me. And then yeah. you know what? You're so cool about it that because people are gonna have an opinion. Of course. So you're you're dealing with it with a way that you're explaining it and what works for you because mm-hmm. everybody has to have what works for them in their relationship. Mm-hmm. So like if you're open and honest, that's really what I get about get mm-hmm. from it. So someone else is feeling the same way and they're mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm gonna look into it. It's a word for it. But you yeah. look, you like, Thank you. I got this. <laughs> Did you just show it up? No, no. I was telling her she didn't have to answer the the office phone. Get the phone. But Sharice, tell us about Follow Friday, why you started it, what is it, and what is it about? Well, Follow Friday LA is a basically an entertainment industry networking event mm-hmm. that is produced by my company, which is the She Rise Enterprise. And I basically started it. I was talking to a colleague of mine, and she asked me if I knew somebody that worked at Warner Brothers uh, mm-hmm. Records. And I'm like, you know, the name sounds familiar, but I don't think I know them. Mm-hmm. So, of course, the first thing you do is jump online, mm-hmm. look on Facebook, see what their picture look like, see if you know them. And it turned out that they were my friend on Facebook. We had communicated in my <laughs> inbox. <laughs> but I had never met this person in person. And that's what people say about social media. It's like it's so social that you, you're always communicating, but mm-hmm. a lot of people you may not have ever met. And sometimes right. you can walk right past the person on the street or be yeah. at an event and you not even know that that person is in your network already mm-hmm. and you kind of just need to reach out to them and possibly connect and do business together right. mm-hmm. so the whole purpose of follow friday la is to get off of the internet mm-hmm. off of social media and actually meet your followers in person mm-hmm. that's awesome yeah because okay. you know follow friday as a hashtag is very popular on social media mm-hmm. there's like millions of people um so what I did was, like I say, I just started it to get people off of the internet mm-hmm. and meet those people that you're telling people to follow in person. Mm. 
I think it's been going awesome. really well too. And so, what do you want people to get from the Follow Friday event when they come? You know, because it's intimate. It's yes. at a different location each each. What? Third Friday. Third Friday of the month. I do it on the third Friday of every month, and it's always at a different location. So we've been in Beverly Hills at Philippe Chow. We've been to the Redbury Hotel. Mm -hmm. um, been to the Powder Room. We've been to St. Felix. And on Friday this week, we'll be at Tiffany's on Vine. I keep hearing about this Tiffany's on Vine. Yes, yes. I think it's been a couple of things, but it's right there um, across from the Red Hotel. Yep, right Red across the street from Red, the Redbury. Oh. And Avalon Hotel. Or oh, yeah. it's fairly new though, right? Um, a yeah, I would say, so? yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's been Shit, there for thinking. years, but they always change in the name. They're yeah. getting, actually, they're getting ready to change it again to Manor on Vine. Yeah. Okay. Mm. yeah. I would have a question for, actually, both of you ladies, because you're both awesome publicists. You, you mentioned that you want to get people offline and in front of the people to see who they're interacting with, to see how you guys can actually interact, help, and network with each other. But how important is social media right, right now? Because everything is so entrenched in social media. You gotta do this, you gotta do that. But I mean, it's like, it's so much work sometimes. So it's, how it's, do you get to make it like a natural thing? It's a job in itself. That's mm -hmm. why so many corporations have a social media department okay. now and you have social media managers that a lot of PR companies mm -hmm. will have to hire. I mean, it is truly the key to everything you do now. Everything. So do you think meeting them in person first, like say at a, or, or in addition to that, helps, you know, really kind of connect the dots with that? I would say for me personally, people hire me to be their social media manager. So Got I it. definitely mm -hmm. know how important social media Got is. It. Um, and I tell all my clients, hey, you have to get on social media because that's what's hot right now. A lot of times when you're doing, when I'm booking them for like TV shows, Wendy Williams or something, or if I'm pitching them for stuff like that, the first thing that they want to do is look on their social media and see how many followers they mm -hmm. have. Because if they don't have that's enough followers and they don't have a content, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's not fair, but mm -hmm. then other times too, like it's you don't true. want somebody to be on your couch or interviewing somebody that nobody mm -hmm. cares about, mm -hmm. right? Because the, the end goal. Like for me, for Follow Friday LA, that honestly the end goal is for me to take people who have a lot of followers and possibly enter in their network as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm inviting them to come out, meet their followers in person, mm -hmm. and we can all network together. Got you. And then, so it's the third Friday of every uh, month, but then at the culmination of each quarter, yes. you honor someone. What yes. is that about? So, um, last month was we do it every three months so every three months we actually present somebody with our social media influencer award mm -hmm. and it's an actual like heavy glass big award mm -hmm. wow. makes them feel special and like i say the purpose of that is i'm getting people that have 500,000 followers mm -hmm. to invite their followers out and now i'm building my network even more mm -hmm. as well so that's like the whole thing is just to build a network i'm more off of energy mm -hmm. and filling people and seeing how I can't work with everybody. Right. For me, it's not just about the money. It's about the money, but mm -hmm. it's not just about the money. I have mm -hmm. to really feel you and want to work with you. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't like your project, if I don't like you, period, mm -hmm. I'm cool. I don't I, need I the stress. Yeah. yeah, I don't need the stress, and I don't want to work. Mm -hmm. What I do is not work. I don't mm -hmm. know about you, but I love helping people. And I, for me, that's what it's about, yeah. helping people. I, You've been in the business, what, 20 years, you said? 20 plus years, yeah. I'm you older, not that. You not that I'll be 40 in April. So you were 18? Yeah. I started off as a vocalist first. Okay. My brother was signed to Aftermath. He was Dre's protege. Okay. So, like. I was the, you, so, you be humming. See, that's how she got him. <laughs> that she be in there humming to him. It's not pillow talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I grew up around, you know, my, you know, my dad is a musician. My mom was a singer. So, I grew up in this business mm -hmm. and I definitely tried to get away from it. But it kept drawing me in. But I, I feel the same way. Like, if mm -hmm. I don't believe in the project, mm -hmm. I won't do it. We. I just turned down somebody yesterday mm -hmm. who was a disaster. I was like, that money is not worth my headache. Mm -hmm. And I just will not do it. I just won't. I just can't. <laughs> so I understand completely. So is all publicity good publicity? Or what do you think? Because, I mean, I hear that word all the time, but I don't always feel that way. Like, you know, I think that it should be structured. That's what publicists are for, right? You gonna take that? I think that... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what? Some publicity is a headache. Right. You know what I mean? Because I'm not going to say who, but I've had Well, damage control of, would be right, like a headache. Exactly. Yeah, damage, okay, yeah. But okay. some publicity that they're getting causes mm -hmm. me to have to do damage control. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff, sometimes I really don't need. Other times, if the client has nothing going on, mm -hmm. it's kind of a relief that they finally had something mm -hmm. that I can talk about and mm -hmm. something that I can create something around now. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But other times, it's like a... You never really know until it happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. How the how the people are going to react to right. whatever it is. So if it's good, then it's all like, oh, good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, then if it's bad, like somebody was doing stuff on social media this morning. Oh. And <laughs> we had to make sure that it didn't get out to the world before it was a disaster. So, you know, I'm just like, what are you doing? Sometimes the client reacts before thinking. Kanye West. And all, I'm yeah. not naming any names. I'm just <laughs> so. <laughs> what you what would you do if that was your client right, right now? Do you feel like, I know he has an album dropping, so there's going to be a lot of chatter about that. But Colin, Taylor Swift, just period as a woman that y'all don't have, I mean, you may have met her and y'all friendly, but I thought that was kind of like out of line. And you're a married man that's saying I probably could still fuck her or something. Then he, he said something like that. What would you do if that was your client right now? I want both of you guys to answer that question. I don't know if I could deal with a Kanye West. Oh, I mean, okay. like, I mean, just being honest, just my personality with his, mm -hmm. is certain, it's certain artists that just won't listen. Okay. You know, I think, not even get segwaying from Kanye West, look at Justin Bieber. Like, he, he fell off the grid. He was going this, going left for a minute, mm -hmm. and now his team pulled him back in. They didn't cut his hair. They made him look like the white boy again. Oh, the blonde. Yeah, and now he's Tiger not... Tiger got blonde all, hair, too, right now. But he's not all thugged out like he was right. a second ago, like last year. So now they're bringing him back to where he was in the beginning because he's listening. Mm -hmm. He was losing sponsorships and endorsements and all these things because of his image. Some clients, you just they just don't care. And they just like, I'm going to do me. I'm going to hit sin. Yeah, and I'm rich, and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. So, you know, again, he reacts before thinking, and then he wants to retract it. Like you're talking about your ex fiance's baby on social media, which had that comment that he said Amber had nothing that to do with Kim. The world does not revolve around Kim Kardashian. I, Every year, despite what people think, <laughs> so it's uh, they're in their own bubble, you mm -hmm. know, and they need to be in their bubble together. So, I think that's a good yeah. okay, 10 minutes, and then well, okay, and then what would you do if that was your client? How would you handle like I've all that? I've had a similar client, not mm -hmm. on that level. Right, right, I right. think the level kind of makes a different for, difference for me. Mm -hmm. Somebody like him, I might bend a little bit for him because I know the overall could be bigger for me and my company. You Correct. know what I mean? But I've had somebody that was on a much lower scale than her. I mean, excuse me, than him. Mm -hmm. And I had to let her go. Mm -hmm. Because I'm doing stuff to make my job easier. So if I tell you to put on a bra on the red mm -hmm. carpet because your breasts are hanging down to your navel, mm -hmm. you might want to listen so I don't have to do <laughs> damage control the next day when you're in all the blogs and they're talking about you. Right. If you're drunk on the side of the street and I'm like, okay, it's time for you to go home, you've had enough, mm -hmm. and you're getting mad at me because you're trying to prevent I'm TMZ exactly, from not taking no pictures. Exactly, but you're telling yeah, me I I'm stopped like drinking too much on the show because one time I was looking at myself and I was doing this. <laughs> and I was, you know how you look at yourself, and I was like, you just got that dumb drunk look on, and it's not cute. Yeah. So some know. people don't. Some people are like, I want to do what I want to do. You're not my mom, and I'm like, no, but you're hiring me to do a job, which mm -hmm. is take care of your reputation and how you look in the public's eye. So if we can't agree on that, and you don't listen to me, it's not work. you're not allowing me to do mm -hmm. my job. So therefore, you can have your money. And you can go on about your business and go give it to somebody else who's just going to take it from you. But if you're giving it to me, I'm going to make sure that my name is on your brand so you're going to look right. You're yeah. not going to be looking any kind of way and then saying that Sharice Ford is your publicist and working yeah. with you. And I agree. Oh, you, you, I was going to ask you a different question. But oh, you're but like, no. I agree. <laughs> like, you're like, that's how I feel. Your clients have yeah. to listen. They do. They need to listen. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you get lucky. Like, mm -hmm. this morning when I had to reiterate some things to... You know, a client, she was new to Snapchat and thought it was going to go away in 10 seconds. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, now 50,000 people didn't doubt, snap, have screenshotted this, what you did. And now let's just make sure that nobody gets it. Okay. So, you know, it's a lot of, 
A lot of work, you know, people think it's PRs, red carpets, and events. It's mm-hmm. a lot of writing, a lot of writing. And a lot of emails and phone <laughs> Yes. Pitching. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot. So for those who say they want to be publicists, mm-hmm. and those who have come to the MV7 group and have not fulfilled as interns and said, oh, no, this is not for me, make sure you guys know that this job is work without us. There is no you. You can have management and all these things, but PR and marketing is the, the key essential to anything. That pencil, this microphone, whatever it may be. So people don't get how, how valuable publicists are. So because what's next for you? Work. We have work. a lot a lot of events coming up this mm-hmm. year. Um, I was asked to be the uh, Los Angeles representative for NAB Film. Um, which is a oh, an organization uh-huh. um, for like LA. Is it almost like a guild? Or is no, it- it's more like a, you know black women in entertainment okay. kind of like I call it like a entertainment sorority almost. So they asked me to be the the West Coast representative mm-hmm. for PR, and I was excited about that. So we have e- thank you. Yeah. So we have some events with that, and then our own events with clients. You know, Sunday does her charity thing, so. Mm-hmm. We have I Easter. Sunday we wanted to do something. She has an Easter drive and yes. something for prom. So both of those are upcoming. <laughs> yes. And Beauty and the Beat will be there. Yeah, and then another one of our NAPFIM sisters also, she's doing this big skate thing. She's like a world-renowned skater, like roller skates. Mm-hmm. So she's bringing that to L.A. It's like a three-day event, and we're working on that's going to be Like really roller great. skates? Roller skating. Oh, okay. And there's a lot of celebrities who are in that world that a lot of people don't know about either. So, it's, it's that's going to be fun. So, you have to let me know about everything. Of course I will. Because Beauty and the Beat is going to be involved, too. Uh, of course I will. You know, you know the newsletters. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. That's right. That's good. So, Follow Friday. Tell them how to follow it's Follow Friday. Follow Friday, LA. Dot com. Um, what I have coming up, actually, one of my clients, which is uh, Professor Kells, who is the director. Oh, we meant to shout, shout cool. them out. I got after, it. You got, I got it. it, baby. Yeah. I got it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I didn't say it, though. I in said the, the girls in blue, didn't we? Okay, yeah. They were in go. purple, but it's cool, though. Yeah. Colorblind. It's all It's all right. I got you. <laughs> Vegas this <laughs> morning, okay? I woke up on the floor. No, I'm just kidding. Professor no, Kells no. is the director and founder of the Divas of Compton, they as so well good. as the Darling Divas of Compton. Were they on that day? They dance were. Moms or dance, no, it was actually dance. on Bring It on Lifetime. Bring It, yes, that's show. Yeah, yeah, and they actually had the highest rating rated show of the season that yeah, the show has ever had. Yeah, they were good. So they, they good. have actually been asked to come back this uh, next season, mm-hmm. and they'll start film filming next month. Good. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I have another client that's going to be on Love and Hip Hop. I'm not going to say who, but I have a client that's going to be on Love and Hip Hop this LA. coming season. L.A. Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just working on my Follow Friday L.A. I love you ladies both. You love- Thank you for having me. Yes. yes. We're going to have to talk about this more because every time we have more information about it, we want to know more information. You got it. You're going to have to almost do a panel on here one day. So people, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we, we, they're going to want to know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going yeah, yeah. to mm. Yeah, fail, get that together. Mm. Uh, you know. <laughs> the website is going to be up. We're going to have a host. We're going to have yes. people hitting us with questions and emails. Like, you gonna, yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> that's your project? Yeah. The, yeah. My website? No, oh, I was like, I was like, I was like, like wait, what is that? Like, oh, Shona, we did like, not discuss you. that. <laughs> we did not, I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Like, what? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, okay, good. cool. All right, well, we know how to follow you. Did we say that? Yeah. And I want you ladies, so everybody's coming to follow Friday LA. Beauty and the Beat will be there. I you hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we will all be there. We will all be there. Well, if you don't, if you guys don't have any plans, it's actually from five to eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. So oh, it's kind of yeah, happy yeah, hour yeah. time, okay. right? See, I was smart. I wanted to make it during the time, right when you get off. Well, when yeah. people are getting mm-hmm. right off of work, it's in the center of Hollywood, so it's easy accessible. And you know, come out, have your last business meeting, or after you're done, come have a drink with us, mm-hmm. get some food. They have great food mm-hmm. there. You can drink water. No, I said have a drink. Oh, okay. Oh. I like, don't drink. I was no. like, yeah. drink water? I don't judge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I'm going to have a glass of Pinot Noir, <laughs> but you can drink water. Wine if you want time. To. Wine down. <laughs> well, it's awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. It's Beauty and the Beat, Miss Shona, MV7 Group. Yes. Sharice Ford with Sharice Ford. The and She Rise Enterprise. The She Rise Enterprise. And Follow Friday LA. And Follow Friday LA. Yes. <sighs> 
You did. She's hung over, so we're going to give her this pass. I know. It's okay. <laughs> Beauty and the V Radio, and we out. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.